Hey guys and gals, how we doing? It's me, Joe Sires, back here for the Music Factory Studios. I want to talk to you about something, and uh, I want to show you a, a, a neat little trick that you may want to use if you're using loopback and say a capture card. So basically, what I'm doing here is I'm using loopback to send audio from my mixer as well as Logic Pro into the capture card and my monitoring mixer so or audio interface whatever you want to call them the converter <laughs> so the problem is is when i speak through my microphone it's coming through my speakers another option i could use is to open a channel in logic and use that as my audio monitor and kind of mute that but then it gets kind of wonky so i kind of want to show you a neat little trick so follow my routing here basically what i've done here is i've taken my mic output run it to left and right into the output channels which goes to not only the capture card but also my speakers if i get rid of the inputs going to the speakers i don't hear logic pro so how do we get around this well i'm going to show you give yourself two more output channels these are virtual it makes no difference and what you want to do is delete your connections from your audio input here to outputs one and two okay and the next thing you want to do is connect your microphone to channels three and four's input okay and the output of three and four just to the capture card. Now I can turn my monitoring software or my mixer back on. I can listen to Logic Pro myself without hearing my microphone. That's great. It makes it a lot easier. That way I'm not getting any feedback. I don't have issues with my microphone being live in the room and all of that great stuff. And now I can listen to Logic Pro without issue of having it feedback through my microphone. And it's going directly to the capture card. My only issue is I wish my capture card looked better, but that's okay. I'm using the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus. And the reason I went with that is because, well, to be honest with you, it's the only capture card I could find at the moment that will record audio as well as video from the Mac directly to an SD card. So I don't have to have a separate PC or anything else to capture with. It captures it at 1920 by 1080, so it's 1080p, 60 frames a second. It has 4K pass-through. So if I'm using my big monitor in the, in the, the mixing room, that's a 4K TV basically, when I plug it in, I get the full resolution on my TV in the big room. Or in here, I can have 1080p on my BenQ monitor. It doesn't look the greatest at 1080p, but that's okay. I'm fine with that. It gets the point across. Everything looks sharp enough. Okay. I wish that little things like text was sharper, but I can deal with that much and it takes all the processing off of the computer instead of using screen recording software because my bigger issue has been this i like to use ScreenFlow, and i like to use camtasia well ScreenFlow was always my my choice because it records the screen at 60 frames a second whereas camtasia on mac only records at 30 frames a second so i when i first got my egpu set up okay i was trying to use screen flow and it would not record the screen well if you're using an eGPU like I am screen flow will not work with an eGPU that sucks so I went and grabbed Camtasia but Camtasia's issue is Camtasia only records the screen at 30 frames a second that's no good because 60 frames gives a feeling of very fluidness so it, it just looks and feels smoother so i had to come up with another option i could use quicktime 
that's fine. But I wanted to get away from using the CPU at all because I have some tutorials I'd like to do of very large sessions that when I go to record, even on this MacBook, which is a pretty powerful machine, okay? This is not, you know, a quad core. This is a, a six core, 12 thread machine. And it just, it, it would bog it down too much for me. I mean, as you can see, it's an i7 9750H. It has the Intel 630 built-in graphics, the Radeon Pro 555X, plus the Radeon 5700. And, you know, it has enough power CPU-wise to do these large sessions, but to record the screen at the same time was an issue. So my first idea was, well, I've got this PCI Thunderbolt box that I use for other things. Why don't I try a GPU in it? So I stuck a 5700 in there. Well, yeah, it kind of helps, but the thing about Mac OS is when it does screen recording with something like QuickTime Player, it's going to use the Intel graphics. Well, that's pulling wattage away from my CPU cores. So that really didn't help. So I grabbed the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus, and it works great. It records to an SD card. I've got a 64 gig SD card. The other day I recorded a complete mix session for, for a client because they wanted to see how I was mixing their song. And it, I think I did four or four and a half hours and it only used a few gigs. Like I didn't even get close to filling that 64 gig card up at all. It records at about 20 megabits a second, which is pretty good. I mean, it, it, the less movement there is, the lower the bit rate will be. And the faster the movement, the higher the bit rate will be. But it has a pretty good encoder on it. It has not failed me. It has an audio output. This AVT GC 513 is the Avermedia card. And as you can see here, it shows up as an HDMI. Now, here's the thing. If you have a monitor that does not have an audio output, okay, like doesn't have a headphone port or speakers built in, you won't see this. You won't see the AVT GC 513. That's the reason I'm using this BenQ monitor. I don't personally like this BenQ monitor. I have a another monitor that is an HP that I really, really like. But when I use it, I don't get the option to route audio. So it doesn't really help me in any way. So I switch back to this BenQ monitor. And over HDMI, this BenQ monitor is okay. It gives you 60 hertz. When I'm normally using it without the capture card, I use DisplayPort because it's a 144 hertz monitor. And I like the, the faster refresh rate of 144 hertz. It just feels a lot smoother and a lot more fun to mix on. But I have nothing but good things to say about this Avermedia Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus. It does its job perfectly well. It records perfect for me. I could live stream with it if I wanted to, which I have done for clients, and it is built like a champ. No issues whatsoever. So I'm able to get audio into Loopback without hearing it through my audio interface and go to the capture card only by adding another output. Just click the plus up here at output channel and route your microphone in stereo. So run two lines to the input of three and four, and then run the outputs of three and four into your capture card. If you're using something like this Avermedia Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus, which is, you know, basically all you need for audio tutorials. Now, if you want to do higher resolution and get the same kind of options, there's only one other option I've seen that isn't in the thousand dollar range. Now, there are a few HDMI recorders that are meant for broadcast there's one called a, a ninja i'm not sure who makes that but it records at in pro res at 4k but elgato now has a new capture card that records 4k at 60 frames a second to an sd card in hebc the elgato and this abermedia live gamer portable 2 plus are the only two that i know of that can record reliably with audio 
to an SD card from a Mac, PC, iPad, things of that nature. But Elgato has such a bad reputation for working with Macs that I didn't even want to chance it. The Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus was like $119 or something. Not bad for basically a an HDMI video recorder. The Elgato is $399. And I wasn't sure if it's going to work or not. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and Max and their H, a, HDCP or whatever it's called, the, the protections that are on a Mac can be an issue. I just turn it off and it works perfectly with my Mac. This is a 2019 15 inch. It's the last 15 inch MacBook Pro that they made. It basically has the same CPU as the new 16 inch MacBooks. So everything's basically the same except for the graphics card on, on these. And as far as hardware goes, and it just this Avermedia Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus works really great. You can hear logic and you can hear me. So. I hope that helps somebody out that's that's trying to figure out how to route audio to a capture card. This should work whether you're using a capture card that that is only a recorder or a capture card that's going and capturing to another PC or Mac. This this routing should work the same either way. If I had one complaint about loopback, I would say this. I wish you could change the colors of these connections just so because if you get a bunch of routing going on it can be complicated and convoluted so but this is how you route audio so you don't have feedback loops in your tutorials all right guys and gals i hope that helps somebody out if it did thumbs up subscribe below hit the little bell for notifications if you'd like to see more from the music factory and since you're already here on youtube why don't you check out one of these videos down below we have a bunch check out our channel all right thanks guys and gals we'll see you next time have a great day y'all